everyone. So a little bit ago, I did a video on gluten-free snacks and food ideas for teenagers because um, in case some of you don't know, my youngest son has ulcerative colitis. And as soon as he was diagnosed in the hospital, one of the first things his doctors did was put him on, at that time, a strict paleo diet. Um, after a quarter of doing really well, they changed that to gluten-free, dairy-free, and he's been gluten-free, dairy-free, with the exception of Greek yogurt, ever since. And that's where that video came from. And we were gluten-free generally in the house, but the adults in the house um, don't didn't need to be gluten-free, so I would still eat, you know, get regular, regular, glute, like bread and traditional flour-based products. Let me back up a little bit. So I also have an autoimmune disease. I have Hashimoto's hypothyroidism, um, which you know I don't want to lump into. When you think of an autoimmune disease, you think of some really nasty, horrible ones to live with. This is not one of those. I've been very lucky that I've been asymptomatic for a very long time. Um, but what it is, is it's a, sp a specific form of hypothyroidism. Hypothyroidism being where your thyroid gland, which is right here, doesn't pr produce enough of the hormone that it should. Um, the big thing that thyroid hormones do is regulate your metabolism. In my case, my metabolism is much slower than it should be. Um, and a lot of other things, but I'm generalizing to get to the point. Hashimoto's hypothyroidism is the autoimmune version of it because it's where your body produces antibodies that attack and destroy your own thyroid gland. So I said I was asymptomatic and I am, but every time I would go in for my quarterly exam, the antibody level, the thyroid antibody levels on my blood test would go higher and higher and higher and higher. And they're getting pretty high. And my doctor's concerned because even though I'm not showing any symptoms, I don't have any nodules on my thyroid gland, all that's good. It has, I guess in some cases, been linked, high antibodies linked to ultimately thyroid cancer. Obviously, we don't want that to happen. So he suggested maintaining my current medication, which is a combination of Synthroid and T3, um, but also to try going gluten-free because it had worked so well with Shane and his autoimmune disease. The studies aren't really there to support that it works, but anecdotally, it seems to be working really well with a, for a lot of people with various forms of autoimmune disease. The theory behind that being that gluten increases or triggers inflammation in your body. Inflammation triggers flare-ups of autoimmune disease. Okay, so kicking and screaming, I went into this, even though I knew how well it was working for Shane, I like bread, I like flour, I love deep dish pizza. I love all the things I should not be eating at my age, okay? So, since June I've been gluten-free and my lab results came back the first round after three months of being gluten-free, my antibodies almost dropped in half. Um, my next round of labs I just had last week, I still have a hole in my arm. Um, and my antibodies have not dropped, but they have stayed exactly the same, which has never happened in a really long time. So it's, I guess it's working. So this is a very long introduction to show you the gluten-free foods that I eat, how I can maintain being gluten-free. What that means is I'm not celiac. I do not have to avoid every trace of gluten in my diet. And also, let me just say that these are all basically carbs. My gluten-free diet, is the same as most people who eat gluten. It's mostly protein-based and fruits and vegetables, and those things are naturally gluten-free. And, you know, if I want to have chicken or steak, potatoes, rice, any kind of salad, vegetable, fruit, those are just going to be in my diet regardless. With Passover, right around the corner, this has been not something I eat all the time, but when I'm having a traditional Jewish meal. Um, this is matzo ball and soup mix um, by the brand Stripes, and I used to use the regular brand, um, the gluten-full brand, but now they make a gluten-free uh, option. So that is what I make my matzo, that's how I make my matzo ball soup. Um, I eat a lot of hummus. I love hummus. It's easy. When I'm hungry, I can just grab it and go. And I use, if I'm being really good, I just dip carrot chips in it. But when I just, I want some carbs. These have by far been my favorite. These are the Glutino gluten-free bagel chips. And it is a very sunny day, so it's hard to see. There we go. These are the Glutino gluten-free bagel chips. They're great for any kind of dip. They're great if you just wanna like put a little cream cheese on them in place of a real bagel. Um, these are fabulous. I haven't found a great gluten-free bagel. You will not be seeing that there. Suggestions, send them my way. But what I have found is a great gluten-free English muffin. I love these. These are great at breakfast or for a quick snack. And these are, again, the Glutino brand. 
the um, gluten-free English muffins in your freezer section. So check those out. It's weird. I get like, this is not in the gluten-free section. This is just in the Jewish food, ethnic food section. These are in the gluten-free section. These, which I'm about to show you are not. This is from the brand Kame, I think. And it is uh, Pad Thai noodles. So, you know, and Shane loves these too for a snack. You can make a little stir fry of whatever you want, chicken, beef, if you're into tofu, shrimp, whatever. And then these just heat up in the microwave, 90 seconds. You get a little soy sauce or whatever you want. These are more snacky kind of things. And speaking of soy sauce, this is what we're now using. It's the La Choy light soy sauce. And what I like on the label, it says gluten-free as always. So apparently it was always gluten-free. So good to know. This has been a life changer. Clearly I've used this a lot. This is, I'll just show you this end of it. This is from Udi's and they came out with this fairly recently. It's new, new. It's their delicious soft white sandwich bread. Um, it is delicious. It is still best eaten as with most gluten-free breads, toasted. Um, but this has made it where I can actually have sandwiches again and I do like to reach for a turkey sandwich with some sliced tomatoes and a little Havarti cheese and mayo once in a while. So it's nice to have that there. Now in place of something like couscous, which I used to eat all the time and I do really miss, um, I will make quinoa. So quinoa is naturally gluten-free and it is loaded with protein and it's actually quite good for you. So that's a nice substitute. More carbs, here we go. I make a lot of pasta. I'm not Italian, but I, if I could be reborn into an ethnicity, I would love to be Italian. Um, so I make a lot of pasta dishes and this one came out not too long ago. This is a very budget friendly brand, the Skinner brand. They have all different kinds of shapes. This is rotini. I like rotini the best. It clings, the sauce clings to it much better than some of the other noodles and it doesn't slip around. Anyway, whatever. So there's this one, but then Barilla also makes a really good gluten-free pasta. And these are not in the gluten-free section of my grocery store. They're just with the other pastas. So if you're looking for this stuff, that's where it is. Um, I don't eat, I make pancakes a lot for other people. I'm not a, I mean, I like pancakes. I don't, it's not what I think of first when I think of breakfast for me. But when I do make pancakes, I feel like uh, if there's a commercial, I don't do this, but when I do. The gluten-free Bisquick mix is really good. One of you recommended the Pam's Kitchen also, and that is fabulous. I'd show it to you, but we ran out of it. This is in my like pancake mix baking aisle in my grocery store, so I don't have to find the special gluten-free section. And then something that people forget about. If you live in Texas, this is like a staple in your house. Tortilla chips. Now there are tortilla chips that are manufactured in a completely gluten-free place, and so it'll be stiff. These are not for you. Do you see Rowdy's nose coming up here? You wanna say hi? Come on. He wants to make an appearance. Okay, but you're not getting it. No, don't eat the microphone. Um, yes, Rowdy is a big fan of gluten-free food as well. Actually, Rowdy eats gluten-free food. Rowdy's on the Canada, it's, I'll spell it, it's C-A-N-I-D-A-E. Rowdy and Mimi are on the Canada Pure C dog food, which happens to be gluten-free. Anyway, um, if, no. That was Lisa J. Um, okay, anyway, if you live in Texas, these are a staple, and these are corn tortilla chips, is what I was trying to say. Um, you know, if you have celiac or you have a serious gluten sensitivity, obviously you want to find the ones that say gluten-free. But in this case, corn tortilla chips, are they are gluten-free just by their nature. There's nothing in here other than white corn, vegetable oil, and salt. Now, I'm a girl who likes her cookies, okay? I like cookies. I, if I could give up salt, not a problem, wouldn't, wouldn't care at all. But if I have to give up sweets, I just, I can't do it. Now, I'm not gonna sit and eat a whole box of these all in one. Well, I could, I could. But, okay, so I, I like a little snack when I'm watching TV in the evening on the couch. These are so good. This is from Kinnick 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 Kinnick. And these are critters. These are gluten-free animal cookies. I have animal crackers. I have tried the Annie's. I think it's Annie's. Those are dry and crumbling. They taste terrible. These are actually really good. These have changed my life. These are from the brand Goody Girl. I almost said Goldie Girl. Goody Girl cookies. These are the fudge striped ones. I love these. 
Love these. These taste so good. These taste like just normal cookies. You would not know they were gluten-free unless somebody told you. These are just in my cookie section at my grocery store. Um, they also make a Thin Mint version of like Thin Mint Girl Scout cookies that are fabulous. There's one more cookie I wanted to tell you about because it's new to me and I'm really excited. In San Antonio, there is a restaurant chain called Order Up and I don't believe that they're still around as a restaurant chain, but they you can order cookies from them because their cookies were amazing. And I do, they were big, beautiful, chewy chocolate chip. They're all different flavors. Well, for my birthday, they reached out to me and asked if I'd be interested in trying their gluten-free chocolate chip cookies. I had to hide this in my freezer because Shane has eaten most of them. And that's fine, but I wanted to save one just so that you could see it before it disappears. I can't finish one of these cookies in one sitting. It is like a cookie meal. They are so rich and so delicious, and I'm sure they are not dairy-free, so Shane shouldn't really be eating too much of this, but like, I'm sure there's a ton of butter in here. Look at this, it's like an ice cream scoop size of cookie. I'll put this back, because I will let him eat it. Um, I do not need a giant cookie in my life. They are incredible, and they are, you can ship them. You can order them for delivery. So I, this is not sponsored, but I did taste it, and I'm like, <laughs> I have to share this with you all. This is so good. So. They make great care packages. Shane doesn't watch my videos, so I can tell you that they will be going out to Ole Miss in the fall for a care package. If They make regular cookies too, but if you're looking for a really good gluten-free one, you gotta try these. And then the last thing, I make these more for Shane and his friends, but I, I like eating batter, like when I'm baking, like cookie dough batter, cake batter, brownie batter. So it is nice if I'm making a gluten-free, say brownie mix, I can lick the bowl. And this one is not gonna bust your budget and it's really good. It's from Krusty's, which is a very budget-friendly brand in the grocery store. And it's the Supreme Brownie Mix Double Chocolate, thick and creamy. Super good, kind of like the big thick cake-like brownies if that's what you like. Love it. So being gluten-free, it's not that hard. You, It's easy these days to just go to a regular grocery store, swap out your general ingredients for other things that are you know, now very commonplace when we first started this journey two and a half years ago with Shane. We had to shop specifically at Whole Foods, um, and it's just not the case anymore. And I have to say that Sam's Club, our local grocery store is called HEB, Target has an incredible gluten-free section. Walmart has some of the best gluten-free options. Costco, I mean, it's just become so mainstream. Even in restaurants, they have gluten-free menus. Um, places like Schlotzky's, I'm talking fast food, and yes, Sometimes we eat fast food. Um, they have gluten-free buns on the menu, gluten-free pizza crust available. Most pizza places, like when we're ordering for our kids and their friends, Domino's, Papa Shop, they all have gluten-free crusts available. So it's become, in the last two and a half years, very mainstream, very easy. The hardest thing for me is saying no to the bread basket when we go to a restaurant, which at my age, I should probably be saying no regardless of whether it's gluten-free or not. So I hope that this has helped some of you who maybe are struggling, you're new to this gluten-free thing, you've been told you have to do it and it's a hard transition. It really doesn't need to be. It's easy to swap stuff out um, for your regular cooking and eating things. It, it, it takes a little bit of time, but I promise you, stick with it. It'll just become second nature. It does not mean the end of eating good food that tastes good, that makes you happy, because I truly believe that you have to enjoy your eating experience or it's you're not gonna stick with it. If you have any tips about other great gluten-free, more mainstream available things that you know have been working well for you or your family or people who are gluten-free, please share those in the comments below. Keep the discussion going. Thank you so much again for spending your time with me. I will see you in the next video. Bye.